This well-known group of birds varies in size, with large round heads and loose, fluffy plumage. Oregon has 12 different breeding owls. The western screech owl, standing 9 inches high, is Oregon's most common small owl, and like the smaller northern pygmy and flammulated owls, nests in abandoned woodpecker holes as well as holes in cliffs. The burrowing owl is just the opposite. It likes to nest in modified burrows made by ground squirrels or badgers. It has a wingspan of 24 inches. The short-eared owl also prefers its nest low. It's usually a depression in a marsh, meadow, or grassland with little or no lining. The long-eared owl likes to nest 15 to 30 feet above ground. The great horned owl, standing two feet tall, is only slightly smaller than the great gray owl and is a major predator of the spotted owl. But it's not the only one. Spotted owls are territorial. When they hear our imitations, they think it's another owl invading their territory, and that's why they respond. Okay, here she comes right through here. The spotted owl, it seems, is anything but shy. And as scientific surveys go, this one is pretty easy. It took just a few minutes of calling for Dr. Eric Forsman and Amy Price to bring Oregon's most notorious bird out of hiding. And that call right there is the common four-note hoot that you hear normally when you're out doing surveys. It's the most common call we hear. This spotted owl head count is done throughout the Oregon Coast Range. It's part of an ongoing two-decade-old research study. The study remains funded in part because of the lingering controversy over owls and logging. But while the owls have been protected by law since 1994, Eric sees little evidence of recovery. One of the main techniques that we use to, to locate nests or to deter determine if spotted owls have produced young is we, we put a mouse out. That's part of their normal food. Once they take the mouse like that, we just we normally try to follow them to see where they're going to go to with the mouse. Eric had hoped the owl would lead him to a newborn. He was disappointed. Yeah, all she's going to do is eat it. If she was still nesting, she would carry that mouse right to the nest to feed the young, and she's not doing it. So it's just a sure sign that she's not nesting. Even in the best of circumstances, owls don't always successfully raise young. But every vacant nest is a setback for the species. The number of spotted owls in Oregon has declined steadily, about 1% a year. This despite increased protection of owl habitat. Eric says a new threat has emerged, one that has nothing to do with chainsaws. What has changed is that the barred owl has gradually invaded this area and the numbers are increasing pretty rapidly. The barred owl is not the same as the more familiar and native barn owl. Rather, the barred owl hails from the east coast. No one knows why they migrated to Oregon, but one thing is certain. They are taking over the best spotted owl habitat. This two-week-old barred owl, seen here munching on a snake, has evicted a nesting pair of spotted owls. Those spotted owls haven't been seen since. We don't have a clue in the long run how this is all going to work itself out. On most decent spring days in the Grand Ronde Valley, you can find Jim Ward out checking barn owl families. This brood uh, consisted of eight individuals to begin with, and the oldest ones have already left. There's just three in here now. These guys will be leaving any day now. They look as if they're ready to leave right now. These young owls are another success story for a project Jim started back in 1983. From plans found in a book, Jim built a nest box and put it up in the barn. And within a week, the owls moved in the box and started nesting. Everything about these birds is designed to catch rodents. They've got rather large wings for their size. This allows the bird to move effortlessly over the terrain searching for rodents. Their feathers are really soft. It allows for silent flight. Their face is designed much like a satellite dish. Their ears are offset. One ear is higher than the other. 
and the sound hits the dish and funnels to the ears. And research has showed that uh, barn owls have the most acute, acute hearing of any other animal tested. Their hearing is so good, barn owls can locate and catch prey that is completely hidden from sight. Barn owls are the most widespread of the owl species, and unlike the spotted owl, they adapt fairly well to the presence of man. What they seem to lack are good places to nest. Barn owls historically nested in cavities in trees, in caves, uh, in cliffs, also in, in holes in riverbanks. And there just aren't very many of those sites available in the, in the Grand Ronde Valley. From the time they fledge, their average lifespan is, is probably less than two years. For Jim, the reward is watching the rapid recovery of barn owls in the Grand Ronde Valley. And that's why I've enjoyed this project. Uh, I can merely tack a few pieces of scrap lumber together and, and really make a difference in these birds' lives. With 60 boxes up, most of them being used, uh, there's a lot of birds out there now that probably wouldn't be uh, around without the boxes.